Hello Year 10 and welcome back to the UK's Physical Landscapes. Today we continue with 4.3 uh, which is coastal processes and we're looking specifically at different types of waves found around the UK's coastline and something called sub-aerial processes. Sub -aerial processes. I thought I'd start with this image, it's not in your PowerPoint, but it's just a useful illustration of uh, one of the things you'll be looking at today. So this is an area we have studied called um, Hornsey, which is along the East Yorkshire coastline. And you'll know from previous work and from the lower school, that the East Yorkshire coast is vulnerable to um, coastal erosion um, and other things that we will be talking about today. I just wanted you to look at this dramatic coastline uh, and also just start to think about maybe what the cost could be to those living and working in the area. It does look like sudden movement has taken place and I'm hoping that the work that you do this week will help you understand it a lot better. Let's start with your checklist. I've recommended that for 4.3b, you make sure you backtrack and look at 4.3a. So make sure you've completed activities from before half term. And of course, wherever you see note taking activity, make sure you do that. So task one is video notes. Task two is a word fill activity. Task three you're completing a table. Task four is also video notes. Task five is a definitions match up and making sure we understand biological, chemical and physical or mechanical processes. Task six is textbook questions. And the task that you will be submitting today is a practice exam question that you will need to upload to satchel one. Now, as I mentioned before, you will have a couple of video note activities to do. I've also asked you a question here for the challenge. I've asked you, do you think waves in the North Sea would be stronger in January or July? And it kind of alludes to the whole premise of everything we're talking about in this lesson about waves. You need to remember that everything to do with waves and their capacity to erode or to deposit is to do with the amount of energy. So there's a word that's going to come up, a key word that I will explain in a bit more detail. Before you do that, you will need to complete the word fill on the next slide. Now I'm going to give you a quick heads up on this slide. The first word that you need to put into this word fill is energy. The first word is energy. And again, we're starting to think about the energy carried in the waves and whether this leads to um, action that is more constructive or action that is more destructive. So you'll see later in the lesson, we talk about constructive waves and destructive waves and the eagle eyed amongst you will be able to see where those words fit in. The really important key word is fetch. Fetch is the distance that a wave has traveled. And why is this important? We can assume that if a wave has had a longer fetch, a larger fetch, it surely has had a greater opportunity to build up energy. So on this map that I've just nicked from the internet, it says that the largest fetch for waves that are received by the British Isles is that that crosses the Atlantic Ocean. So you'll see that in the southwest of the UK, those waves have the largest fetch. And I'm not quite sure whose lesson this is from, but they've asked a really cool question here to help us think about it. They said, why is surfing better in Devon and Cornwall than it is in Norfolk and Suffolk? Now, Norfolk and Suffolk are along the east coast of the United Kingdom. 
and you'll notice that the east coast kind of borders the North Sea, whereas Devon and Cornwall uh, border the Atlantic Ocean, the North Atlantic. So that question is very useful to get you to think about the different wave types experienced by the UK. Now here we have a diagram showing constructive waves and another diagram showing destructive waves. I like the fact that whoever created these diagrams has put flat for constructive waves and steep for destructive waves. Why do I like it? Because you can start to think about the capacity for these types of waves uh, to either erode or deposit along a coastline. Now I want you, when you do this activity, to have a good read of the annotations, okay? And this will enable you to complete the wave characteristic table on the next slide. But please don't jump into that activity without reading page 124, which I've scanned and added to the end of this PowerPoint document. You'll notice that the constructive waves are flatter, more gentle, okay? And this does have a bearing on the actual shape of the beach that it approaches. Destructive waves are steeper. They again have a bearing on the shape of the beach that they're approaching. Constructive waves approach the wave uh, approach the beach rather with more energy than when they leave the beach. So we say that the swash is stronger than the backwash. The swash is stronger than the backwash. And that means that the net effect, the overall effect, is deposition. For destructive waves, we say that the swash is weaker than the backwash. The swash is weaker than the backwash. And this means that the net effect, the overall effect, is erosion. So material is being taken, taken away from the beach. Here is the table you have to complete. It summarizes what I've just been saying. I know that <laughs> it might result in some repetition, but it is useful for you to make sense of these two types of waves. And you are very likely to receive a question, maybe a four marker about this in your real exams. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated, guys. We also have to talk about sub-aerial processes. It's very, very easy to confuse these with the types of erosion that we discussed in previous le lessons. The key ideas here are weathering and mass movement. And sub-aerial processes are those that act on the cliff top or the cliff face, causing it to weaken. So the first thing you will do is make notes on the BBC clip that I've linked there. What you will then do for task five, having watched the clip and hopefully having read this slide in beautiful detail, is to match up the three types of weathering with their respective definitions. So what is biological weathering? What is chemical weathering? What is physical or mechanical weathering? Once you've done that, there's a little table on the right hand side and you have to decide if each of those refers to either biological, chemical or physical weathering. Now moving on to mass movement, you'll remember I showed you that picture at the start from the East Yorkshire coast, a coastline we know that is very vulnerable. Remember that coastline is subject to very harsh weather conditions along the North Sea coast and also you have to remember that the amount of energy, there's that word again, in the waves approaching that coastline is increasing due to things like climate change. And you remember the villages, the towns that have disappeared into the sea since Roman times and this is happening at an increasing rate. The key thing to remember here is slumping. 
So the image that you saw earlier was an example, a real life example of heavy slumping. I would like you to read this yourselves, but you need to make sure you're aware that geology and the slope of the cliff are very, very important here. So watch the clip linked there on the right and then answer the textbook questions noted at the bottom. The last thing you're going to do is a practice exam question. And this is the only thing you will actually have to upload. So you do all of the tasks, but this is the only thing that you will upload to Satchel 1. I've bugged the question for you. There will be a point where we don't do this and you will need to do it yourself. Here we go. So the command word here is explain. Explain why some coastlines experience rapid erosion. So, of course, not to patronise you, but it's not all coastlines that experience rapid erosion. And we need to think about the different factors that do contribute to rapid erosion, erosion along these particular coastlines. The question is worth four marks. So it's two plus two, two well-explained reasons. I've given you some suggestions from 4.3a and 4.3b to help you start to figure out what you would like to say. So, does the coastline have very destructive waves? What is the geology of the coastline? Is the coastline concordant or discordant? Is it a very sloped coastline? Does the coastline experience very heavy rainfall leading to possible slumping? So using full sentences, it shouldn't be too long, your response. Submit this piece of work, preferably handwritten, to Satchel 1. I would like you at the end of the lesson just to make sure you go back to the checklist at the start to make sure you've done everything. And of course, if there's any question that you might have, please contact your geography teacher. Wishing you the best of luck. Have a fantastic week.